Hey everybody, Dayo really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Kyoto Wins. We're on Sanan's route. My twin brother Kaoru led me to father, who actually turns out to be rather dastardly. But fortunately, Sanan came and followed us, and he's here to rescue me. So you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Whether you like it or not, you're all just a bunch of disposable ronin. I did the world a favor by experimenting on you all. Father, I... I can never come to forgive you! Father acknowledged the rage in my voice, but instead of talking to me, he continued with Sanin. Hey, don't ignore me! So you are going to hold a grudge against me too, Sanin? Her words are exactly what I would have said. His support gave me so much confidence, knowing that for the first time he'd agreed with me. This seemed to have taken Father by surprise, but he grinned nonetheless. Ugh, I'm not asking for your forgiveness. Sanin, how would you feel if I told you that I can cure the Fury side effects? A truly enticing offer, but what are you expecting as compensation in return? All right, to the point you are. It saves us more time. It's simple. Give me my daughter. He doesn't have me. You're really just asking him not to interfere. Father spoke with no expression on his face, and Sanin closed his eyes, sighing. In the Shinsugumi's Rules of Conduct, there is a section dictating that we cannot make any litigation agreements without prior approval. As I am sure you understand, I serve as Colonel, which means it would be inappropriate for me to violate such a rule. <laughs> so should I interpret this as a breakdown of negotiations? The tone of Father's voice dropped. Then, right after... You are too easy, both of you. What? Kaoru shrieked wildly, lunging a sword as he charged at Sanin. Sanin protected me! Chizuru totally looks like she was just expecting that. Had total confidence in Sanin. Oh man, he looks gorgeous here as always. Although I am now a fury, you would be wise to never underestimate Keisuke Sanin, Colonel of the Shinsengumi. Ugh, you fury scum! You are just a fake! Stop acting so tough! It troubles me that you would think of me as a fake, but I proudly accept the title as Fury. Confidence radiated from Sanin's voice as he shut down Kaoru's attempt at provocation. It was as if he were proud to carry the burden of the Shinsengumi. Yukimura, stay close to me. Okay. I leaned into Sanin who pulled me close to him as I nodded firmly. Sanin, release my little sister. Yeah, like he's gonna do that easily. The Shinsengumi has promised to protect her. As Colonel, I will do whatever it takes to keep this promise. I said, release her! No, I won't. As Sanin swung his whole weight behind his sword, Kaoru's blade met with his and produced a gleaming flash between them. Oh. What just happened? <clears throat> Kaoru, perhaps taken by surprise in seeing Sanin's strength, backed away slowly from him. How about a proposition? As in, the two of you should retreat while you can. Ha <laughs> ha. You sure have a big mouth. You seriously think you could take me out? Well, the way this fight's been going. Kodo, can I just kill these guys already? He's starting to piss me off. Did you just ask if you could kill your sister? He and Okita are really getting under my skin. Okita? What? He's not here, is he? No, boy. He is living proof of a successful fury experiment. I went to examine him further. Sanin listened to them speak about him, and I watched as his face grew more irate. Do you mean to say you are going easy on me? Wow, I had no idea I was so easily underestimated. Then please, show me what the true power of a demon is. No! If Sanin and Kaoru were to use their true strength, then blood would be undoubtedly spilled. Father, please stop! Kaoru, I mean, you, you too! I have no intention to leave with you, father, so please, no more fighting. Kaoru listened to my wishes, watching me with surprise, perhaps at my attempt to speak out. What? What are you talking about, Chizuru? We came all the way here for you. W why? Why wouldn't you come with us? Then something seemed to enter his mind, and suddenly his demeanor changed. Ah, uh, I see. I get it. They're manipulating you, aren't they? Him and Okita, too. Watch, your brother is going to save you. Boy, 
It is time for us to go now. Surely Chizuru needs time to process all this, and she can't make a decision in this state. To my complete surprise, it was Father who stopped Kaoru from making a final charge. What? If we strike now, we could... Let us go home, boy. Understood? <sighs> Kaoru was peeved by this order. It seemed at any second he could snap at Father, but... Finally, he sheathed his sword, never removing his glare from us. Father, however, was unfazed by his petulant display, and he spoke calmly to Sonin. Sonin, aren't you interested in expanding the potential of the Furies even further? Doesn't the possibility of doing research with me thrill you? You, of all people, know how difficult Fury research can be alone. Together, we can achieve things that you can only dream of. Sonin lightly shook his head. That's my man. No reaction came from Father, though. Except to look rather nonplussed. He simply stared back at Sonin, fixing his gaze. The two looked at one another, implicitly realizing how different the two of them were in their paths. Finally, the silence was broken by Sonin, who had one more question for Father. One more question, if I may. Is there a future for the Furies? Well, I suppose that is entirely up to you. Very well, Sonin. Why don't you take this into consideration for our next meeting? I hope to hear some good news from you. Father smiled peacefully, then turned to face me. Goodbye, Chizuru. I will come for you another day. Then I saw the same smile from him that he showed me when he left me alone in Edo. He beckoned Kaoru to follow him, the latter still fuming to himself, and they departed. I made no attempt to see where they went. Father... After all this time, I found you. Why did it have to be like this? I truly believe that you were a good doctor. Father. One who worked to help others. I thought that you'd be the one to help the Shinsengumi in a time like this. Sorrow and rage began to overwhelm me, and my eyes burned from how badly I wanted to cry. I felt tears welling up. Then, Sanin spoke up. If these answers are what you seek... Then you will surely see him again. Why don't you try asking him yourself? If this is what you desire, I will help you. Really, Sanin? Of course. I too have any questions for Kodo in the future. Well then why don't we stop him now and ask him? He can't be far away. With each thing Sanin had said, I found myself nodding over and over again. It came to a point that Sanin gave an uneasy laugh as he tried to stop me. Yukimura... It's time to return. Everyone is worried about where you are, I'm sure. Okay. Sanan and I left for Yodo, where we'd expected the Shinsengumi would be waiting for us. But to our surprise... Here's our final chapter with him and this game, unfortunately. And we have to wait for Edo Blossoms. However... As we drew closer to the fortress, we'd noticed a major change. The Satsuma Choshu troops had displayed the gold brocade flag there, which was an official symbol reserved for the true Imperial Army. This changed the face of the war totally. Both the Tosa and Saga domains were in the west of the country. Both of them, too, had allied with the Satsuma Choshu in their fight against the Shogunate. Domains who had previously stayed on the fence or remained neutral began to support the Imperial Army. The Awari and Nyodo domains, longtime allies of the Shogunate, had also defected to join the growing forces of the Satsuma Choshu side. Before we knew it, we were alone in our fight, and the Shogunate army was forced to retreat. However, the biggest problem was within the Shogunate army itself. When the news of the Satsuma Choshu troop becoming the official Imperial army hit, it most affected our Supreme Commander, Lord Yoshinobu Tokugawa. I'd heard that when he was told, he escaped Osaka Castle and fled immediately on a ship to Edo. Fearing a treasonous uprise and a possible threat to his life, he hid in Edo for protection. Because of the loss of their leader, the Shinsengumi couldn't keep Osaka Castle as their stronghold. When Sanan and I reunited with the Shinsengumi in Osaka Castle, we were informed of all this. It was already decided, however, that the Shinsengumi was ordered to retreat for Edo too. I'm sure the decision was difficult for Hijikata. <sighs> After boarding our ship to Edo, 
I was told that Yamazaki was in critical condition. Since I was the only medic aboard the ship that could tend to the wounded, I watched over Yamazaki. Yeah, Yamazaki was the only other person with medical knowledge. His injury, however, had gotten far worse than I could give him treatment for. Uh, Yukimura. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. What's the matter? Are you in pain? No. Please, call the commander. Wait, no. I, 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 I'd like to discuss something with Colonel Sonnen. Can you p please call him? Uh, for him to ask for Sonnen of all people in his condition meant... Oh, no. I wouldn't recommend it. Are you sure? Yes, please. I've made up my mind. I scurried out of the room, rushing to find Sanin so I could honor Yamazaki's wishes. I wasn't sure at all if this was the right thing to do, but... If this was Yamazaki's final wish, I could do nothing but honor it. If anything, this frantic desire to help was what pushed me to call Sanin. Sanin, who'd gone to fetch a vial of the Water of Life, entered Yamazaki's room soon after. You'd think he would keep one on him at all times. Yamazaki, do you recognize me? Yamazaki! Yamazaki! Sanin's here! Yamazaki! Yamazaki! Yamazaki, whose breathing was strained and staggered only moments ago, was very quiet. Yamazaki! Please, open your eyes! He looked like he'd fallen asleep. Instinctively, I checked for his pulse. <sighs> After a moment, I shook my head at Sanin. It seems as though we were too late. The water of life can only do so much, and it cannot revive the dead. If only I had known sooner. Yamazaki was just asking for you a second ago. I am certain as he grew weary from the approach of death, the serum was his final choice. Yamazaki. No matter how many times his name left my mouth, his eyes remained shut. It was a quiet end for him, at least. Like, he's sleeping. No matter how many times we lose Inoue and Yamazaki, I just feel they wrote this game so well that it just always makes me sad every single time. I mean, I know this is fiction, but it's still just really sad. The Shinsengumi lost many close friends in this war. I, too, lost both Inoue and Yamazaki, who had both died right in front of me. As the night passed, I tossed and turned in my futon, unable to sleep with the thoughts of my dead friends haunting me. I headed for the deck to get some fresh air. Oh. I stopped myself, seeing someone I didn't expect to see. But that I really wanted to see. Looking gorgeous as always. Having trouble sleeping as well, are you? Yes. I mean, what with Yamazaki passing and all. You too, Sanin? His passing disturbs me indeed, but I am a fury. The nighttime is my daytime. Oh, you're right, huh? Over the past few days, I had spent most of my time with Sanin while the sun was still out, so it sort of slipped my mind. Oh, has Sanin actually been braving the sun just for me? Sanin quietly fixed his gaze toward the stars. Another lost comrade. Inoue Yamazaki. If I had been beside them, I might have been able to prevent their passing. Because I was incapable, the two of them. Watching Sanin so distressed in front of me gave me the same feeling of dread as when I'd seen Yamazaki die before my very eyes. I feel like I understand where you're coming from, Sanin. Usually, I'm against using the serum. But for those who wish to keep their lives, for those with life still left to live. That serum, the water of life, it could just be someone's last hope. Or at least that's what I think now. Thank you, Yukimura. I am positive that war will continue for the Shinsengumi, and I do not wish to see any more of my comrades lose their lives. Although you may not like this, I will continue to research the water of life. My heart tells me I should stop him, but I can't. I don't think I'll ever be able to change the way I feel about it, no matter how much time passes. Go inside now. Please, let me be out here with you for just a moment longer, Sanin. And I want to see what comes next with you, Sanin. Of course, you can stay as long as you would like. 
Sanin smiled kindly, a smile I hadn't seen in a very long time, and I nodded to him. I will continue beside Sanin for as long as he lets me, even after we return to Edo. This is the vow I made to myself. Oh my god, that's the ending already? So like... Mm, okay, uh, maybe... Maybe it's just Sanin. Maybe he just has a very short uh, spell of material in this first half of the game. I hope. I hope other people have more material <laughs> in this first game than he does. Dear god, please. Because that was barely anything. That was like, what, one and a half videos worth of material. But we did get some really gorgeous art out of it. Since we, since that was rather short though, and we have some time, I'll go ahead and do his tragic love ending. He has two bad endings, there's a tragic love ending and a bad end. So, oh, let's see how long they are, see if I can fit them both in here. After these credits, so as you can see, that's how the, uh, quote-unquote endings are for this. Um, when you have successfully cleared the route, basically, so that when the second half of the game comes out, your character, that character's route has been unlocked, I suppose, to go into the next, uh, half of the story. God, Sonnen is just so beautiful! Or do we actually get an epilogue? Oh, we actually do get something after the credits. January, 1868. The Battle of Tobo ended with the Satsuma and Choshu victorious. As the shogunate troops retreated, the Shinsengumi headed towards Edo. Four years ago, I came to Kyoto all by myself, in search of my father, and met the Shinsengumi. I'm going to leave the city of Kyoto, where I made my fond memories with the Shinsengumi. Although he challenges me in ways I couldn't ever expect, I have chosen to walk alongside him. We're going to head to Edo, without knowing what fate awaits us. Oh, that's all? Uh, that's barely an epilogue. Been... And finally, his record of service has been... unlocked. Alright, so now that we have his record of service unlocked, we can go in there and go down to... Alright, okay, yeah, go to Chapter 5, Keisuke Sanin, do Romance Low. And skip until you come to the first choice. And for the first choice, you got to say, you're fine, Okita. But why am I saying that to Sanin? Okita's not around, I don't think. I wanted to assure Okita that he wouldn't die from his illness. But there is no guarantee that his body will be in any condition to fight in the future. Sanin seemed concerned, not only with the illness, but rather what Okita valued above all. It was true, Okita had no wish to live long, but instead he couldn't stand to think that his life's purpose would be for nothing if he remained sick. Well, yes, but... If he truly wishes to wield his sword once more, he must be willing to do anything, no matter the risk. Perhaps I simply wanted to imbue into him the same determination. And we have to ask for a reason again. Alright, so here's the point at which it's different. I had the feeling it would be something... I had the feeling it would be a difference as whether or not Sanin would want to work with Kodo. So here we go. What an enticing offer. However... I do not think I'll have any trouble getting you to talk. Sanin gripped the hilt of his sword on his hip. Oh, and here I was hoping for a peaceful solution. A last chance. How about it? I have no faith in someone who would leave us so readily to show me any honesty. However, if I were to coax this information out of you by force, I believe it could be done. Sanin glanced back at me, lowering his voice so only I could hear him. Yukimura, run straight for Yodo Castle. Do not turn your back. Keep going. I can't leave you behind, Sanin. I'll fight too. Please do not flatter yourself. Your presence is only a distraction to me. Well, jeez. Thanks for the vote of confidence. It may be true, but you didn't have to be so harsh. But if you want to help, relay this message. Inform Hijikata and Toto about what has happened here and... Tell them that there is a future for us furies. <sighs> Go. Now. Sanin pushed me away, unsheathing the blade from his scabbard on his hip. How dare you, Fury! I'm gonna set you straight! Sanin, I'm so disappointed in you. Are you now? Well, I'm going to wager my left arm and get what I need from you. 
There was no way anything could get in the way of Sanin's charge toward my father and Kaoru. I promise I'll relay your message, so please, Sanin, come back to us safely. These are the only words I could muster. I turned around and sprinted for the exit. As the clang of sharp metal rang behind me, all I could do was run for it. I don't remember how or where I ran, but somehow I managed to pass detection in the streets of Fushimi to head straight for Yodo Castle. Unfortunately, I was shocked to discover that Yodo Castle had defected toward the opposition, meaning I desperately needed to rejoin the Shinsengumi. After even more running, I finally made it to Osaka, my legs throbbing from the journey. At Osaka, I had encountered Hijikata, as well as the other men who'd arrived there for refuge. After explaining what had just happened to both Hijikata and Heisuke since leaving the Magistrate, including the fates of Inoue and Sanin, I fainted. At least I was able to fulfill my promise to Sanin. I had awoken, realizing I'd slept for almost an entire day. Osaka Castle wasn't exactly the fortress that was promised, as it was becoming a chaotic scene while we gathered ourselves for the retreat. As it went, I had heard the Shogunate's army's supreme commander, Lord Yoshinobu, had fled from the war in the middle of the fighting. As the Satsuma Choshu consolidated their hold with the Imperial Court, they received the distinction of marching as the official Imperial Army. Under such circumstances, engaging them further in war would result in treason from the Shogunate. So, the Shinsengumi was forced to return to Edo. We were informed that we were to board a ship that would take all of us there, but... Chizuru, it's almost time. Can we wait just a second longer? Everyone's already left. We're the only ones here now. But Sana might still return. Please, just a little longer. I want to wait just a little longer. Heisuke's face dropped, troubled by my words. I know that I was sort of being a hassle to him right then. Heisuke, it seemed, just wasn't in the mood to humor me, sighing as he came closer to me. Sorry. I was supposed to give you this a little while ago, but I couldn't really bring myself to mention it because you seemed so hopeful waiting for Sanin. Then Heisuke pulled something from his pocket. I found this back at the Fushimi Inari Shrine that you told us about before. I'm really sorry. I didn't want to hurt you. In Heisuke's hands was a pair of bloody, warped glasses. Sanin's. I took it with both hands and I pressed it tightly against my heart. Then, all of a sudden, I burst into tears, sobbing my broken heart out. Inoue, Sanin, these men gave their lives for me to escape, and now they're gone. Why did I deserve to still be here? If I hadn't been there, if Sanin never tried to save me... I know now that when I return to Edo, I have to leave everyone behind. It's the only way. I gripped his glasses tightly, making a vow to myself that I shall never burden anyone else with me ever again. And that was Sanin's tragic love ending. Which is horribly sad. So yeah, then we'll go after his plain bad ending. Momentarily. Alright, yeah, we can skip the credits here. So we'll just go right for the bad ending. Nothing after the credits for that. For his regular bad ending here, we have to reproach him. I heard you were killing many people in an enemy camp in cold blood. Is that true? If it is, maybe you're going too far. Sanin listened silently, showing no immediate reaction, but he accepted my words. He had neither confirmed nor denied it. Maybe there was something he felt guilty about. He was doing it all for me. It appears you have spoken with Toto. But I am a fury. All I can do is swing my sword at who is in front of me. I am doing the best that I can in the window of time that the Shinsugumi allows me to perform. When he put it like that, there wasn't really anything else I could ask him about. And here's the new material for the ending here, for the bad end. Sanin gave a double take. I is that true? Of course it is. Only I could understand how difficult these past few years must have been for you. If you so choose, why don't you join with me and my daughter, and we can go to my place. I'd welcome you in. Up until now, Sanin kept his composure steady, but this offer seemed to hit him where it hurt. I would love nothing more, but... 
What of my injuries sustained before drinking the water of life? Would they still be healed? Of course. Just come with us and let go of your fears. My left arm is going to heal. If all that my father had promised came true, then it would be a true miracle. Sonnen gazed intently at his left hand, as if the temptation from my father was seducing him. Ugh, you're a fool. Of course it won't heal. Kaoru was behind Sanin, swinging his kadachi around and around. Then, the blade was aimed directly toward Sanin's heart. Sanin, watch out! Ah! Uh. In the split second I'd realized what was happening, I pushed Sanin instinctively out of the path of Kaoru's swing. But, I didn't think about what would happen after. In Sanin's place, the blade struck through me. Kaoru beamed with shock, and I felt each inch of the cold steel force themselves into my chest. But there was no regret for me, because the Shinsengumi needed Sanin. Now more than ever, the Shinsengumi needed him, far more than they ever needed me. Oh, that was a really short, bad ending, but uh, I almost wish that Sanin would have just gone with, with uh, my dad for that bad ending. But... To me, it's sadder when he dies, so I'm kind of like, it's a better ending if I die than he dies. Because I don't feel as sad. But no, it's sad to me that we have so little material with the people in this. Alright, I'm going to start with Ryoma Sakamoto next. As he's one of the new guys, there might actually be more material for him, so we'll see how that goes along. I mean, it's a good game. I'm happy with it, but I'm just so upset that it's just the first half and, you know, nobody said anything. I really wanted to date Sanin so badly, and we got so little with him. I can't help being upset about that. I just kind of feel like I was teased, you know? <laughs> uh. Alright, well, yeah, again. Ryoma Sakamoto in the next video. Hope to see you there, or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.